Hello people, I'm Ryan and I've been hacking things my whole life. If you're new to my channel, I primarily have robots in my, ch my garage. I do CNC, laser cutting, 3D printing, and a new plasma cutter that's coming that I don't know how to use. Today we're going to be doing a shop tour. Why do you want to watch this video? Number one, it's free. Number two, uh, you might learn something that's free. <laughs> Hey guys, it's going to be a little bit longer video, but I'm going to cover everything, but I got to get this little camera so I can walk around to that. All right, here we go. We're in the shop now. So let's start over here. This is my electronics area. This is uh, all of the parts for that I use for um, the electronics. Um, this is my heat shrink stuff. That, that's what gives uh, the ability to shrink something down. Um, I have all of my switches and stuff inside of these cases. I've gotten these cases for free. Sometimes I order them on Amazon. Sometimes um, I don't. This in here is my dre two Harbor Freight Dremels that I use for my custom mouth guards. This is probably why my number one cheapest thing used in the shop these 99 cents clamps from harbor freight uh here is my mouth guard uh vacuum former that i make all of my mouth guards and uh, you can see from previous videos that i used to have bruxism which is clenching at night and i make my own custom night guards with switches um with that uh this is a power source um another high used item in my garage is this Voltameter here from Harbor Freight. What's great about it, it actually has temperature and decibels and it actually does light. So that's one of my favorite things that I have inside of my shop. Here is my new soldering iron. My, I did a video on that. That's a dream soldering iron. Um, I had another one, but this one was nice because I can, I like the way that it had the solder that's right there. Now, normally I put the solder up here at the top um like up here and i can go ahead and move my solder where i need to right there so down here i have my t-shirt making stuff i have a 15 inch press which i bought at a uh, pawn shop in durham i have my vector cutter that cuts out another robot that i, ha I have this cuts out all of my um t-shirt designs it's cord management is crazy in this shop so this cuts out all my t-shirt designs, and then there's all my vinyl that's down there, there uh, underneath it. Now this is my hat press. This, this actually does all of my hats. My daughter's actually started up her own um, hat business with that, but I do all of my hat, hats. I just turn it all on, and it goes up to 350 degrees. This thing goes up to a crazy 400 degrees, and that's industrial. Uh, that's storage. That's from our future electric scooter project. Um, so that pretty much wraps up that. That's really important to me, uh, this particular shelving unit that I have. Now, this is a bunch of tools. That's my table saw, which is heavily used. I just converted this space over today because this is the place that I'm going to be getting my CNC Lagmar um, Systems plasma cutter, which is going to cut things out. It should be enough space. If it's not, I'll shift everything over to the side. But what I just got yesterday was that massive air compressor, and that massive air compressor is going to be really helpful to... Um, push the air that's needed into this plasma cutter, which is right here. So I got the plasma cutter. I just don't have the table. This is going to go away. That's my Pinewood Derby track. I'm putting that in storage. So up to here, um, I'm working on getting AC into the hack lab. I'm building a vent, which goes out the side of the garage right there. But I, since I don't want to blow out the brick of the building, which I did for my Glowforge, I'm designing my own vent system that goes in the crack of the garage door. So that AC unit not only does de dehumidifier, uh, but it also does a AC. I just built these bins that are right, these rolling cabinets that hold the bins. Um, and this is primarily my backdrop. I have a very, I buy very cheap tools. Um, I have no sponsors. Uh, so these tools, this is a Ryobi, but it does a really good job. I don't, not sure what this is, but it's a bandsaw, but I love it. I have another bandsaw over here, 
but this one is a Harbor Freight, but I would never cut things on this big bandsaw that I would cut on this little bandsaw. I wouldn't give up that little bandsaw for anything. Um, here's one of my favorite tools. It's a mini lathe. This is at Harbor Freight. I just absolutely love this thing. I don't know if it works. Probably doesn't. Yeah, it does. So that turns things like pens and stuff like that. Uh, this old, old Mac Mac runs that monitor, but it also, I can check the different things that's going on if I did a live stream. Um, I want to build a robot that goes in my crawl space, so that RC car is going to do that. I'm just kind of going up and down. Um, I want to learn how to use um, whatever that is. I think it's a, uh, um, I don't know what that is. I think it's a, um, some type of, uh, I'm, kind of, I'm joking. So this grinder is um, really r critical. I bought this used at my company I work for, and it came with a bunch of really cool wheels. Um, I'm going to probably bolt this down, but uh, this um, butcher block, I don't want to put a hole in it, so I have to come up with a way to bolt this down without damaging the butcher block. This is my painting area. It doesn't look like that, but with this airbrush, it doesn't have any smell. So I just primarily use the paints and I use this little area. Most of my stuff is really small. If I wanted to do something big, I would just come over to here so you can see that I can paint from there to there. So that works out really well. Um, this is my secondary aquarium. I'm building um, a parts for the inside of aquariums. So um, I got the two most popular, I'm building laser parts. So I got the two most popular aquariums, the BioCube, uh, the 29 and the 32, and this is the 29. Um, that's uh, of course the uh, Millennium Falcon. I'm from Michigan, so I like snowing references. I think I stole that sign when I was a kid. Uh, I think that's a stormtrooper. That's my daughter's helmet when she was a little kid. And then I have a AT-AT, uh, which is up there. Um, yeah, that's an AT-AT. Some used skateboards that I plan on making art with, but they may just stay up there. And here's a future project. This is a Jeep Renegade 1970 or 19, yeah, front grill that I plan on doing art with. I've had that for a long time. Up there, I built that whole shelf. It's one of my first videos that is going to be, um, it's actually harder to put stuff up there than you think, but I have all of my Christmas presents that are up, uh, Christmas, not Christmas presents, my Christmas storage that's up there. So this, that's, um, is gonna be Kaizen foam to hold all of my tools once I get around to it, and I'll make a video for that. Okay, so this is primarily my main surface. Thanks to Alan for giving me this, uh, Karita for giving me this Dell server cart. This is a Dell server cart on its end. So you can see it's extremely industrial. Uh, so I'm just really finicky about organization. So there's, I, I buy all these bins at Home Depot. These are pretty much full of stuff that I need. And anything that I don't use, I usually put away, but I like to have a work surface at all costs. There's no rhyme or reason of why these are here. I do put my pencil sharpener on the edge. I use a, my favorite pencil is a blue pencil. I got that from my industrial design background. Um, I pretty much use all of this stuff here. These dental tools, which I buy at Harbor Freight, which are really important for the, my mouth guards. Uh, these really tough scissors, which are awesome. So then we come over here, my miter saw, I switched over to all um, battery operated tools as much as I could afford in 2019 so I did I buy these used um, this was a brushless one that I bought um, it's not great but uh, it was a pretty good deal for 40 bucks or something like that but I recently just got a grinder an M18 grinder and I'm really excited about this I got um, dust collection for this miter saw that goes down into a um, vacuum that's down there, but I also have dust collection there and inside that cabinet Let me give you a sneak peek of that inside this cabinet is My dust collection system. This whole cabinet is a Harbor Freight Dust collection thing that's turned on its edge. So all of the suction and the motor are right in there um, This is my old drone and which bit it the other day. I just crashed it big time Okay, we're halfway done. 
This is a little bit longer video than I thought, but whatever. This is part of my uh, sci-fi movie that I'm making. It's a satellite that goes on the spaceship. There's my Pinewood Derby track, which is a video I'm, I'm working on right there. It's like, like the longest running video that I've ever done. It's a 45 foot track um, and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. There's the door that I enter from. There's my skateboard. Um, it's winter, so I don't ride as much, but I can charge it all up here. So this charging go port goes right into there. The door does open up, which I'm not going to open up now. Um, and here is my Glowforge behind the door. I have uh, the helmet that I'm going to use in my sci-fi movie that I'm making. Um, I need to put this adapter on my buddy Byron printed for me. It's going to go back in there and this helps with any smell. I have a video that's coming up about the 10 things that I wish I knew about the Glowforge and I'm going to talk about this. So uh, that wraps up the Glowforge area. I do have storage materials there. This is the used uh, Plexi that I get from the dumpster. Um, that I got from that's donated a lot of the materials I use are donated um, I have everything labeled these are all of my cables um, that I use I have bins and bins of cables that I do not use these are cables I use all the time adapters and connectors and stuff like that there's all my future electronic projects and things that I really need inside of the hack lab for projects um, and there is my um, materials for the laser cutter that I built so it all holds um, proof grade material and it has a bunch of junk um, and I just kind of uh, remind myself to be nicer in the world. This is my mouth guard stuff. I wish I would have labeled that. I think I will right after this video. And that is my 3D printing accessory thing that I don't need as much, but I definitely need. Um, a trash can is extremely critical. This trash can I like because I can see how much it's getting full, but I put all of my scraps in here from the laser cutter over to here. Um, and it's definitely good to keep it off the ground because in a garage you have a lot more uh, vertical than you do sort of horizontal or the, the space below. This is my charging rack here. This is for my electric chainsaw or for my blower. My blower is one of my heaviest used items in the garage. These are Harbor Freight brands and they're awesome. Um, these run all of my video equipment, these inner, uh, in a loop. Thanks JB for telling me about these. But these are Panasonic. The charger broke, so I still use an Energizer charger. These are for my cameras. I definitely do for my uh, invention that I have for my ears, for my tinnitus that I did. I need rechargeable batteries, 9 volts all the time. I don't use those in smoke detectors, but I definitely use those for my little inventions. These are my two favorite pots that my daughters had when they were little girls. I keep those around just to kind of rem let me just kind of remember those days. Okay, so over here we have um, all of the 3D printing stuff. I have five 3D printers. I name all of my um, printers here and let me go down the line and I'll explain. But this is where I primarily do all of my 3D printing for my skateboard lights and any inventions that I have are done in this area. Um, I only have one computer that drives everything. These here that I'm gonna sell, these are i7 computers. I just need to find a home for them, but I'm gonna sell those. But that cabinet is um, has a bunch of things in it, but I'll explain that after I explain the printers. This printer here is a uh, MakerBot, and this printer here does two different filaments. I have a black and a red, but it has two different extruders, so I can do two different colors. So I can print, um, like, uh, I'm not sure if I have an example right here, but I could do just one layer of one color, one layer of red, one layer of black. Um, this is Lucy for no other reason that I like the name Lucy, but those are named in my computer. This is Jack. Jack is a, I have a another maker bot that I bought used for $200. These are $2,500 uh, printers that I bought for 200 bucks. Um, this one was a little bit more. This replicator was very expensive. Um, it was like around $400 and I shipped it because you can turn, you can change all of the settings and it had some really high end extruders and, and a heated bed. This does not have a heated bed. So this is where I drive all of the printers right here. 
with this app called the MakerBot app. It's connected to Dropbox, so all of my files will come over. These printers are connected to the, my network here, but I actually just have them all through USB there. This is Lucky. Lucky uh, was my second printer that I ever have. It does primarily all of my embedded electronics that I print. Primarily the reason why I go with these MakerBots is that I know how to take them apart and rebuild them. And they also do flexible material really well, things that are squishy. Um, this is uh, who I who I'm calling slow. This is my only resin based printer. I know it's tiny, but this is what I do a ton of miniatures on. They get, uh, basically it does them in reverse. It takes it, uh, let me remove the time machine up here, down here. And so that this goes through here, you put a UV inside of this plate right here. You put UV, um, resin inside of here and it shoots a light down and this goes up and down and it produces really high end uh res let me go ahead and put the mystery machine back up there this is baby baby was my original uh 3d printer for flexible print i started all of this because i needed mouth guards to go into my mouth um and it was a successful project i embedded electronics and now i have a really i print uh waterproof switches on my website so just to kind of wrap this tour up, this is my 2016 Shapiko. This is my CNC. It's two feet by four feet, but realistically it's 32 by 15. I made this cabinet to seal it in these doors. Uh, there's, I keep a lot of my storage. There's storage under all of these panels up here. All the stuff for my kids um, when they were young. Uh, and I put stuff over here. This is where I do a lot of my editing when I do it in my garage. The back end of where I shoot all of my videos. There's my racetrack. Uh, this is a corner. The cars weren't going around the corner, so I put a fan. Uh, so that's that. I label every single thing. These are all of my supplies. There's my mouth guards, my router bits, my DC adapters, my lightning, uh, lighting, Pinewood Derby stuff, my buttons. RC control, people. Okay, so this is where I store all of my sort of tall vertical boards that I have. It's just a rolling cabinet that I made. It, it's literally, I think it's eight feet tall, maybe even taller, but I store my ladder there. I use my ladder inside the house. This garage functions as storage for everything. For all of the things that we have in the house, there's all of my Halloween stuff for the house. The Christmas stuff for the house that goes all the way over there. My train set. Um, I have my electric bikes over on the top of the racetrack. Um, there's my future electric scooter project for the... Um, I think I'm going to do that in February. Uh, these are. This is all stuff for the electric car that I'm rebuilding. You, uh, you can check out that playlist. This eventually will be a spaceship inside of my sci-fi movie that I'm making. This huge uh, shelf here has to move over to this area. This shelf, this one here, will have to move over to replace that, and I will get rid of that rolling cart um, because I have to make room for my um, plasma cutter CNC table, which is coming right there. So anyways, uh, this trailer right here is not working in here. I got to go find a place to store this trailer. Uh, new wench I got to get the car onto the trailer. But now that I have it there, I got to take it off. And I definitely want to keep storing the car here. Uh, this is my sewing, industrial sewing machine. I've done a lot of laser projects uh, where I do laser patches and then I sew them. I love the sewing machine. And this is where I do all of my intros to the video. This is my control board that I do all of the sound that comes into this boom mic here, which I just upgraded to. These two lights, all of the lights are switched with this switch when I walk into the room. So if I switch this off, all the lights turn off in the room. And then this and this control the other lights. So those are all wired up there on a surge protector into a wireless unit that's there. And that disco light is for future fun stuff with there. Okay, and so this is the bandsaw. I did a lot of videos on, not a lot, that's a lie. I did videos on milling my own lumber. I have a video on that. 
So I'm going to have to find a place for some of the storage. But that pretty much wraps it up. So uh, let's uh, get back over into that camera over there. So that wraps up the tour for today, guys. So I really appreciate you being here. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. And if I can offer you any advice on this maker shop is that make sure you kind of know what you're going to be using your space for. Setting out to make a maker shop for me was a little exhausting. One of the number one things that I enjoy doing the most in the shop is keeping it organized. Believe it or not, it's mindless work, but it's enjoyable. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Love you. Take care. Peace out.